GAMS and Excel using GDX to transfer data. Today we are going to read data from Microsoft Excel into GAMS. We will also write data back to Excel as well as run some GAMS examples that uses Excel. For the data transfer, we will use some of the available GAMS data exchange facilities or abbreviated GDX facilities. Let's start off by reading a table from Excel into GAMS. First, we create a new empty GAMS program by choosing File New. We save the file by choosing File Save As and name it Test Excel. We then choose Menu File View in Explorer in order to see the file location in Explorer. In this folder we can create an Excel workbook by doing a right click and choosing from Menu New Microsoft Excel Worksheet. We give it the name in data. We can then open the Excel worksheet and write the input data in a table. We create a data table with two rows and two columns as well as the table headers. Let us save the Excel workbook before switching to GAMS. Next, we will read the Excel table into the GAMS program. We start off by defining the elements needed in order to read the Excel table. First, we define header labels. We declare set R row labels and set C column labels. The set labels, also called elements, should have the same header names as used in Excel. We define parameter P which we will populate with Excel table values. Next, we create a GAMS data exchange file or abbreviated GDX file from the Excel worksheet. We use compile time statement $call and GDX facility GDXXRW. The first argument is the Excel workbook name. For the second argument, we use trace equal to tree in order to get more information about the GDX XRW process. Next we specify the input type PAR which stands for parameter. In the range specification we can include the sheet name, but if no sheet name is given then GDX XRW reads from the first sheet in the Excel workbook. In the range specification we can specify a block of cells or only the starting cell of a block. If we only specify the starting cell of a block, then we can dynamically add new rows and columns in Excel and the new data can be automatically read into GAMS. Note that by default GDX XRW stops reading a sequence of header labels when two consecutive cells with header labels are empty. However, the feature can be adjusted with skip empty option. After this, we can specify the row dimension rdim and the column dimension cdim. The row dimension denotes the number of columns in the data range that will be used to define row labels. In other words, labels R1 and R2. A similar explanation holds for the column dimension cdim. Now we can run the program in order to create a GDX file. We can see from the output that we have successfully created a GDX file. Let us open the GDX file by choosing File, Open and we start to write in data and then choose file in data.gdx. The GDX file can be seen as a simple database that provides a data contract between GAMS and the source data program. This means for example, that when we change the data source from Excel to Access, then we can easily verify that the input data for GAMS remains unchanged by comparing the two corresponding GDX files with GDX diff facility. Next, we load the GDX file. 
into GAMS with the compile time statement $GDXIN, followed by the GDX file name. Then we load Sumbo P and close the GDX file by using statement GDXIN without further arguments. We can display parameter P and by running the program we can view parameter P in the listing file. Next we will also read the set labels from Excel. First we can remove the set labels from the set declarations. Then we specify that we want to read the sets from Excel and write them into the GDX file. A good way to refer to multiple ranges in an Excel workbook is to use a text file. If we use a text file, then we get a good overview on what is being read by GDX XRW. We use the compile time statements $onEcho and $offEcho to create a text file tasks.txt. We then refer in our GDX XRW call to the file tasks.txt by using the at sign before the file name. We then specify that we want to read the row labels by writing dset equal to r, where dset stands for domain set. Be aware that input type set has also a value field to be specified, which can, for example, denote if an element belongs to a dynamic set. Next, we specify the row dimension to be 1. We could specify set C in a similar way. However, this time we choose to specify a specific block range. Note that only the labels in the specific cell range is written to the GDX file. Then we add another load statement for sets R and C as well as display the sets. If we have several different Excel tables that we want to read, then we may want to use domain control when reading the data. This can be done with compile time statement $loadDC. This may, for example, catch typos when two labels in different tables are intended to be the same but are not. If we use domain control in our example, then we allow to add more rows but not columns. For example, we can add row entry R3 to our Excel table. Running the program will successfully include the new entry. However, if we try to add a new column entry C3, then we will get a compile error. This is because we read in set C with labels C1 and C2, but when we read in parameter P, then GDX XRW tries to read in label C3. However, the label C3 in cell D1 is not defined as a column label, and therefore we get a domain error. In most cases, it is a good idea to use domain control in order to increase the chances of catching mistakes in the input data. However, let us move on to the next topic. Sometimes we may want to see the content of an Excel workbook in the GAMS IDE as a GDX file. For example, if Excel is not installed but the model data is in an Excel workbook. For this, we can use XLS dump. We use the compile time statement $call XLS dump and then the Excel file name and then the output file name. We can now open file mydump.gdx and see that the Excel data can be found in the GDX file. Next, let us see where we can find more examples on reading data from Excel to GAMS. Go to menu help Docs, Tools, GDX Utils, and expand menu item GDX XRW and choose Examples. The corresponding example can be found in menu Model Libraries, GAMS Data Utilities Models. We can run the example and open the Excel sheet test1.xls. 
I would like to point out that GDX XRW supports the use of named ranges that are specified in Excel. Furthermore, GDX XRW supports the input ranges to be specified in an Excel worksheet. However, let us change topic and talk about how to write data into Excel by using GDX XRW. Let's first modify parameter P in order to see a change. Then we can use the runtime statement execute unload to write a GDX file. We give the GDX file the name outdata.gdx. Next, we use the runtime statement execute. First, we instruct to use GDX XRW and then we specify outdata.gdx. Next, we specify that we want to write parameter P in range sheet 2 cell A1. Now, let us run the GAMS program and open outdata.xlsx. Let us empty the table and execute the GAMS program again. Looking at the process window, we can see that access to write to the file was denied. This is because we have already outdata.xlsx open in Excel and therefore GDX XRW cannot write to it. To overcome this, we can simply close the Excel workbook. Now we can run the GAMS program without being denied access to the file outdata.xlsx. However, we may also specify the workbook as shared. In Microsoft Excel 2010, we can find this under the Review tab. Now we can run the GAMS program. To see the changes in Excel, we can save the workbook again. Please be aware that writing to a shared workbook is very slow. However, let us move on to the next topic. Sometimes we want to see a symbol or all symbols that are in a GDX file in Excel. If so, then we can open a GDX file in the GAMS IDE. We can open in data.gdx in the GAMS IDE. We may choose to write all symbols to Excel by doing a right click on a symbol and choose write, write all symbols to Excel file. However, in this case, we only write parameter P and therefore we choose write, write symbol to Excel file. We choose the output file name out P and open the file. Note that the layout changes made in the GDX file in the GAMS IDE are preserved and follows into the Excel file when writing the specific symbol P. However, let us move on. Let us look at two Excel examples found in the GAMS Data Utilities Models Library. The first example shows how to spawn GAMS from Excel. The second example shows how to use Visual Basic for applications or abbreviated VBA to transfer data between GAMS and Excel. Let us retrieve and run example Spawn GAMS Excel. By default, we saw a simple transport problem where we need to satisfy a demand by transporting CAN cases from plants to markets. Spawn GAMS Excel can, however, be used to spawn any simple GAMS program and show the objective value, solver status, and model status in the worksheet. You may find this as a good starting point if you want to spawn a GAMS program from Excel. Let us retrieve the second model library example, TransXLS. TransXLS solves a similar transport problem as described earlier. We can see the solution in the graph. We can see the solution when we allow continuous values or when we require integer values on the number of shipped CAN cases. However, more importantly, the example shows how to read and write to an Excel worksheet with the GAMS VBA application programming interface or abbreviated GAMS VBA API. Note that writing to an open workbook 
with the GAMS API is much faster than using a shared workbook. For those who are interested, can find the latest examples and VBA modules under GAMS system directory, API files, VBA. However, using the GAMS VBA API requires some VBA programming skills. Finally, I want to point out some additional sources of information about GAMS facilities that can be used with Excel. In addition to the manuals like GDX Utils and XLS to GMS, you can go to the GAMS homepage. Click on Search Interfaces Excel. Here you can find additional information on GAMS Excel facilities. Another site that you might find useful is the contributed software. When you search for Excel, you can find several Excel-related entries.